Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to thank all of our people on Slack. Woohoo! So we've reached 600 people. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And we've added a little message here. See our Slack 600 thank you message. So if we press that, here it is. And here are the 600 slackers. Woohoo! So we can slide this or we can do a pull down here and go take a look at the various Slack folks. Hello there, Marsha. So we click and what's the buzz? So here's the little Zim asking Marsha, what's the buzz? And what do we say to Nuriev? Dum, dum, dum. What's up, homie? <laughs> all right, so you get the idea. <laughs> Fun, huh? And so all these are Zim lists, and there's a lot of them. Hi, Ren. Uh, it's so nice to see um, everybody's name again. I mean, many of these people we've built uh, projects in Zim with or helped them build projects. We've, we've seen projects from them. So uh, it's great. And to this very day, they're, they're still here doing their thing. So that's wonderful. If it's been a while since you've been into the Zim, uh, the Zim Slack, then come on back and say hi, please. That's what we're hoping. We're going to message you guys, and we're hoping that you're going to come back in here. This Explorer will show you around some of the new things uh, in Zim. Maybe you haven't seen Zim for a while. We're going to now see how we built this. Why don't we do that? We'll reduce this down with an F11. We'll come on in. This is called Thank You. And here's the Thank You page. We also have an Assets folder with greets and names and font. The greets look like this. So here's where we got those greets from. I'll tell you a bit more about that later, but there's about 60 of them there. And then the names are here, and there are 600 names. Oh, cool, huh? So we're bringing in 600 names uh, into the Thank You. We're using the latest Zim, and we can now import Zim in a JavaScript module, just like that. So no script files. And this one, we're importing the Zim game module because the dialog box right there, this, this thing comes from the game module. Okay, we've got a new frame. We're using the fit mode. Uh, something new in Zim version Zim01, that's our current version is this ready callback. So we're calling the function ready right here. You can still call an event if you want, but we've made it so it's easy to not use an event. It's a bit nicer to see for, for kids who are using Zim. Well, maybe everybody simplifies it a bit. So that's a new parameter in there as of the latest version, which means uh, your Existing, if you're wanting to upgrade existing apps to Zim, just watch that one because then their assets come or assets come after and then followed by the path. You may have in here, you may have stage variables and stage width and stage height, stage W, stage H. If that's the case, you, you can just do this frame, comma, stage, comma, stage width, comma, stage height right there. And then you'll have these variables in here. So that when the ready gets called back, here's what gets added to that. And you'll be able to, you know, use your existing code. However, we're going ahead and using these short little variables anytime we want to access a stage in S, the F for a frame. All right, uh, we are bringing in those assets. So that's the names.txt and the greets.txt. And there's our font object that we're bringing in, all from the assets path. So we use an array to bring in a bunch of assets. If we only had one, then we could um, then we could just put the one there without the array. Coming down here, here's where we bring in the text asset. We're splitting it on its new lines. We're sorting it. And we're mapping, uh, we're basically trimming each line. And that puts those back. So we have an array of names all prepared for us, sorted. And we're saying a number nine, number nine, number nine is how many we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lists that we're making. We figure out how many names are going to go in each list by dividing the length of that names array by the number, and sealing it, math seal. 
we're preparing to, to create an array of arrays. Each of those arrays inside will have uh, a bunch of names in them. And then we're going to feed those arrays into our lists uh, in the near future. So we're setting up S in here. We're looping through the names each time we collect a name. So this is the master names list. Each time we can collect a name and an index number. If that index number uh, modulus uh, n, so n is the, the number that we have. So say we have 60 in, in each, roughly. So if I divided by 6, if the, re if the remainder is 0, if, <clears throat> if that's 0, then we're going to, and when i is 0, the, uh, 0 modulus 6, uh, 60 is actually 0. So right at the very beginning, we're going to create an array and hold it in S. We push that into the sets, so that adds it to the sets. And then our very first time and on, we push the name into that array that we just made. So eventually we'll keep on pushing, 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 and eventually I will be 60% 60, 60, which is also zero. So no remainder there. Once it gets to 60, it will make another S. It will push that S onto our set. So we already have one full one of 60 in there and we add, just add another blank one. Then we keep on pushing into that until I becomes 120. Uh, 120 divided by 60 is zero. So it makes another one. So it keeps on making a new array every 60. Pushing that array into there and putting all of the names in there. So we end up getting nine arrays inside of sets, each with roughly 60 in it. Well, I, I don't know, there might be a, a remainder or a leftover. <clears throat> okay. And then we are doing something similar with phrases, as in we're getting all of those greets. We're splitting them based on the new line and trimming them. That takes off any backslash Rs that might be left or something like that. Sometimes text has backslash and backslash R, and it can cause a bit of a problem, any spaces in there. All right, at the end, we'll get rid of those two with the trim. So then we're making a series because these greets, there's 60 of them. We want to use them sort of randomly, but we don't want just random greets as in maybe we do a greet, greet A, for instance, then we do another greet, greet C, and then we do greet A again. You know, that, that wouldn't be good. So that is what would happen if we just plucked from the array as in a random thing from the array, we might end up repeating. So instead, we're going to use a series of the, the, the phrases, and that'll do one, one after another. Uh, if you just had the series, it would do them the order that they are in the text file, so it would just do them in this order. But that's not optimal, so we could either shuffle, uh, we could shuffle this whole thing and pass it in, or we can use what's called a mix. Uh, shuffling of this phrases and passing it into a series would do the same would, would do them all in order and then do them all in order again, the same order, do them all in order again. You know, mind you, I don't think you're going to be uh, trying this more than 60 times anyway, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's what um, shuffling ahead of time would give us. Whereas a mix will do the series, will, it will randomize it, do the series, and then randomize it again and do the series and randomize it again and do the series. So that's, that's better. Uh, there's actually random. If we say random on there, that's what that will do, exactly what we just said. But the problem with random is once it randomizes it again, say it gets to the end, randomizes it again, it is possible that that first one is the same as the previous last one. So mix solves that. Mix won't let that happen. And sometimes that's important. Okay, so mix makes sure that once it randomizes, the first one isn't the same as, as the, the last one. Okay, so that's going to handle our greets for later, as you'll see. Next, we have the, we're going to take our lists and put them into a panel. So we're going to, first of all, we have to take our sets. Our sets are the arrays of names. So we're looping through the arrays. Each time we're going to get a set or an array there, a set, and we pass that into the list. So all we have to do is pass an, uh, a list of strings into the list parameter of, of the list <laughs> and it will make a list for us. But we are also setting the view number to 1.5. So just watch that. Array, uh, lists can be a bit tricky because it automatically 
sets the size of the uh, label inside. If you're using labels, lists can also list anything, any display object. But by default, if you pass in strings, it's just going to be labels. It'll set that based on the height. So depending on the height, that's how big your font is going to be, if it's vertical, that is. So we're vertical and height is going to do it. So the view num kind of needs to match that. In other words, if we set the view num, imagine I want to see more, like 3.5, then here's what that would look like. So currently, this is what it looks like, uh, our view num. Well, it's, well, I can't do a refresh, I've already saved it. But you see what's happening. If, if I move this, that's one and a half. So the view num was one and a half. And that's good. Uh, well, I'll show you why later, but let's try the three. So now it's one, two, three and a half. And you can see that we haven't changed the height. So many of these don't fit in there anymore because the font's too big. So we'd have to reduce the, the height, uh, 50 or something like that. Let's try it. If we reduce the height, then we would get smaller uh, strings and that looks pretty decent. I guess there might still be some that are longer, but that's uh, that reduces the height of all of this. So in that case, we could you know move up here and change that to 12 or something. We should show 12 of these. So I go refresh, and now there's 12 of them fit in here, which means these these um, lists are shorter. So there's a smaller number. That's why these are, are bigger or longer. So there's a smaller number in each list. Hey, Shan. Oh, gosh, I miss I miss these folks. Wow. Ahoy, you're not exactly... Well, maybe you're a matey. <laughs> I suppose that's fine. Yeah, you're a matey. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Uh, what were we getting at? Okay, so we don't want... I'm just going to back out of that, though, but I'm just showing you some things. And we don't want to do something like a view num of two. Remember, this is a Zim Explore. And so anytime we're doing a Zim Explore, we get to explore some things. Yeah, talk about them. Okay, so this is uh, a view num of two, and it almost looks like the list should go this way and that we don't, there's nothing over here, but there is. And it's like, oh, okay, there's more. So that's why we, we don't do it this way where the whole ones are showing. We want to show a little bit of the next one so that they... Uh, know what to expect. Okay, so view num of 1.5. We've made it horizontal. Usually our lists are vertical, but you can make horizontal lists. We aren't selected. We're, we're telling all those lists to have nothing selected at the start. And we don't want, every time we press it, we don't want that one to be selected because I think people will want to press their own name again and again and again to see you know, some messages to them or something, if, if that's what they want. So that just um, takes off. The, the default is the thing you select in the list will become selected and show selected. Uh, the other thing, and that's this thing right here. The other thing is the roll background color. We've removed the roll background color by setting it the same as the background color. So 777 is the default background color there. And now this is what it looks like when we roll over it. And we just found that it kept kind of like flashing at us and it just, we, we don't really need that. So we turned it off. It's up to you if you want to do that. The padding is, is put in there. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, we wanted this to be thicker. So how a list works is you adjust the scroll bar afterwards. And when you adjust the scroll bar afterwards without the padding, it eats into the the actual uh, list item. It's not the end of the world. We'd have to move all of these things up a little bit because it's it's nearly hitting the bottom of the descender. So that could maybe use a bit of work. I don't I don't mind that we would add padding to to solve that. I guess it's okay. But uh, what I do mind is that once we add the padding, that's a padding vertical, we're left with the padding vertical on the top of these as well. And there doesn't seem to be independent padding top, padding bottom, unless I'm wrong. Maybe there was an indent that we could have dealt with that would have handled that. It was, I think, as far as I know, when we made the list, we covered everything. But now that I've been trying to do it, um, I maybe didn't look into it quite far enough. Anyway, I don't mind how it looks now, it's fine, but maybe it could have been easier, so we'll, 
uh, consider that in our next version of Zim, Zim, Zim 02. We always, um, any hiccups like this that we run into problems, we try and fix that. Well, you know, why not? So if we are manually changing the scroll bar after, then we need to update the list. And now we're taking this list that we made and we're pushing it into a master list of lists. <laughs> Yay. So this is lists right here will be an array of these list objects that we're making. We've also set it to tap. When we tap on it, we call show person. Note that that could have been change. So when the list changes, we call show person. But that would require a different person to make it change. Right now, if I hit David, it shows me David. If I hit David again, it shows me David again. And I want that. If it were a change, it would still be on David. And we'd have to go to some other thing to actually make that, make that change. So we didn't use change. We used, oh, by the way, I didn't save that right there. Well, we didn't use change. We used tap. <clears throat> Note that when we tap, it's much like an on click, but click uh, is not good for, for a list. For instance, if I do this, if I scroll and let up, that's a click. And yet I'm really just trying to scroll. So click doesn't work. Mouse down doesn't work because, hey, I'm trying to scroll. Hi, Emmy. Uh, I'm trying to scroll. And hey, bud, <laughs> how's it going? I admit. Um, I'm trying to scroll. So mouse down doesn't work, click doesn't work. So we had to create tap and tap is a combination. It's a down and an up, but it's only a down and an up if you don't move your mouse like a, a certain amount, okay? Uh, not only that, if, if you wanted to, you could go this way and come back and maybe you could get the same place, but tap, can also limit your time. So you only have so much time before it's considered a tap or before it's not considered a tap, I guess. Um, we actually set the time by default to be fairly large, like a second or something like that, but uh, you could set it to shorter. So tap is really helpful for lit, uh, lists. It helps you scroll here. Uh, hello, Dennis. It helps you scroll there uh, without activating the list. Cool. That's tap. We're turning off the style. What was the style used? Ah, we're shifting those those letters in there in the vertical just to bring up the descenders a little bit farther away. We're almost centering on the descender thing. Uh, no problem. But that was just us. There is no shift vertical inside of the list here, but uh, any label that is in the list will um, uh, be controlled by the shift vertical here in the style. So we're turning that style off so that it doesn't go and affect, say, the label that is the title bar here. And now we're going to tile those lists. So we're making a new tile. We pass in the array of lists. We say it's got one column. It's got this many rows, the length of the list rows, no spacings. And this is very important right here. This means make that array unique, as in treat the things in that array as unique things that we're tiling. If we don't do that, it treats the array as a zim v value or a dynamic parameter. And you get something like this. Hey, Lee tip lim, or T lip, <laughs> T lip lim in two places. Menthen in two places. You know, so now it's randomly picking from the list and pre preparing them there. Barda a couple. So it's randomly picking from the list. Each time it goes, it just randomly picks from the list. And therefore, it might repeat. It might repeat three or four times. Here's a couple freaks and a couple uh, Davids. Huh. Um, okay. So we don't want that. The other thing, the, the other issue that happens is when, when we do that, it's going to clone these things. Um, so the first one's not cloned. Therefore, the first one has the events. All the clones do not have the events because when you clone something, the events don't go with it. So uh, very important. This one right here says treat them as unique, true. And that allows us to say tile um, components that all have their own events and we don't want to lose the events nor do we really want to clone those, those things. Okay, so there you go. Not only that, it treats this list now as a, a series in a sense. So it'll do, it'll do them in order. So the first thing in the list will be the first thing made first thing tiled, etc. And we're back to working. If I save that, hopefully I did. Okay, with A, B, so this is alphabetical order, and um, 
all individuals again, just from that true. So we put them in a panel. So there's a panel and we're making the panel the width and the height of the tile, but we have to add a little bit because the panel the panel's height. So we're making the panel this high is as high as the tile, but we also have the title bar there. And the content for that is the tile. The title bar says Zimster. We're changing the colors of that and we're aligning the title bar in the center. We're centering the whole thing. We're moving it over to the right and we're going to animate this to an X of 50. So we're animating to an X of 50. Uh, we initially centered it and then animated it over, but it wasn't quite long enough. So we just moved it over. We just eyeballed the experience kind of thing, moved it over 200 from the center. We're caching it because if we don't cache it, um, well, a couple things. It's got a lot of text in it. Uh, and if it's not cached, then it has to, every, every time it animates just a little bit of motion, it's got to redraw all these vectors. So there's no point in that. So it, it's better, it's better um, processing experience if you, if you cache text when you're animating it. You can't. Caching text reduces the quality just a little bit. It's not the end of the world. For instance, let's not uncache this. So here's the uncache. Mm, I guess I'll just delete that. Control X. Save that, remember to change it back again. So we bring it in, there it is cached. It's just a little bit blurrier than it used to be. Not quite as crisp, not quite retina as crisp. It's not too bad, but um, anyway, but you don't, you can't tell that it's cached when it's animating. So as it's animating here, you can't really tell the blurriness of it. As a matter of fact, blurry might be, you might want that. It's like a motion blur sort of thing. <laughs> Not that it's that blurry, but uh, I better undo this. So while it's animating, we're caching it. And then when it finishes animating, this is the callback on the finishing the animate, we uh, uncache it. So we take off the cache and then it's back to crisp again. If you want to see the crisp again, we go refresh. So as it's animating, it's cached. And now it's back to crisp, okay, and active. Uh, that's another thing. If it's cached, that, that component wouldn't be active. Speaking of being active, we found that we don't want people pressing on this as it's animating in. It's just a bit awkward. So actually, it's also awkward that if they hold it as it's animating, that will create a problem unless an update is called on this list. So if you're holding one of these things and then animating the list at the same time, like animating its position, um, that would then need an update. So we we found that glitch. Uh, occasionally, it looked like this when we were done. I wasn't you know, I wasn't holding anything. It just looked like that. I go, why is it why is it like that? And I realized it was because we were trying to move this as this thing was being controlled by code. Okay, so that's kind of a, a no no on a list. Lists are quite complicated. But if you did an update on the list, that would have fixed it. However, the solution is don't let them um, use the list as it's animating in position. To do that, we set the no mouse to true. Okay, or well, we call no mouse on it. And therefore, when it's done animating, we bring back the mouse. So no mouse will turn the mouse events off. Not only the mouse events, so that's just, normally that would be mouse setting a mouse enabled uh, false property. So some object dot mouse enabled false, it won't use the mouse. Thing is though, stuff inside it can use the mouse. So you've got to not only set the mouse enabled false, but you also have to say the mouse children false. And a lot of people don't realize that or, or might forget it and it's two steps. So all we did was make a no mouse that just does those two steps. <laughs> and then our mouse turns them back on again. So um, that's a little helper there for you. We're animating the alpha more quickly there, and we're animating the X position to 50 um, with a snap out. So that was uh, introduced in ZimCat as a custom, well, it's, it's now built into Zim, but it's a an easing. We added custom easing. There's the snap, do you see it? Do it again, ready? Uh, snap, cool. Uh, we added um, sort of, custom ease equations. And as we did that, we worked on a couple other ones. There's a few more added at the time. Snap out now is a, a built-in sim ease. Great. Is that cool? 
So we've got our Zimsters list showing up in there. Yay. Um, now we're going to take a look at how we did all of this stuff down the right hand side. And in doing so, it was kind of built part by part. We put in a person first and we based it all on the position of the person. Looking back on it, we might have just wanted to tile all of these things. Let's, let's take a look. So when, hello Bardia. Uh, when we first started, we didn't know we were going to have these things. These things have to be kind of centered on the person. We only had the person in its name. We didn't even have this. Um, so it, it was easier when we just had a couple. But now you see that the, it kind of lines up all right on whatever this person is on. What might have been easier is just to tile one, two, three, four things, center, uh, center align that tile put a spacing in there. Spacing might have been a, a bit tricky and this thing might have been a bit tricky. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Anyway, in the end, we have just positioned thing or located, we positioned the person, located everything at the person and moved it up or down. Okay, so that's what we're about to see. Here's the person. We got this person from the, from the Zim game module. It's a little, uh, isometric person, so it fits on an isometric board nicely, and it's much smaller than that, well, three times smaller than that on the little board by default, but, uh, and the thing about that, you can, you can, if you don't say what color top and bottom it has, it will just randomly pick one, but there was nothing, we didn't make it so that you could change that later with the property, so it's actually made up of a, a whole bunch of different, different parts like a circle that's been squashed into an oval, another circle squashed into an oval, another circle squashed into an oval, a couple rectangles. So to change the color, it'd have to go in and go get child at whatever number that is, probably two maybe. The heads probably one, no, get child at, heads probably zero. This would be one, two, and change get child at one and get child at two, change their colors. Oh, but also three is, is one. So, you know, it's kind of like, ah, I don't know. So instead, we just made the person, and later we're going to um, uh, remake the person. Okay, so we'll just keep on, every time we want a new person there, we just dispose the last one and make a new one with, with random colors. So we want to actually remember the starting position of that because we're disposing it. And so we've, we put in here the starting positions, uh, X and Y. And it's easy to loc the last per or the, the next person, the a new person at that, because when we loc, if we pass in an object that has an X and Y property, we can just loc it at that at that object. So we're just gonna loc it at the start. Let's scroll on down and see where that is. So here's our person, another person that's been made. We're doing some stuff to it, we're wiggling it, animating it, but we loc it at the start. Because that has an X and Y, that works. You could also say dot X and start dot Y, but if you ever do that, that's you know you don't need to. You can just say that, All right? <clears throat> so have a look at that later. Oh, we also changed on that person. We changed the registration point. I think of it to here. It is. Yeah. So it's at the center, but it's ten up from the bottom, and that's so that as this animates in, we are going to wiggle it, and we want it to wiggle from about right here. Um, or I, I guess it was right here. So 10 would be, I can't remember where the default is. Um, I guess it must be, the person must be center reg, yeah. Oh, ah, that might be it too. The person might come with a registration point, or uh, sorry, a zero, zero. You know, tell you the truth, I can't remember. It might come with a zero, zero kind of right in here because on the isometric board, that might have made it easier. Uh, anyway, we just did that by eye, changed the registration point so that it wiggled at a nice place because come to think of it, 10 would, if it were top, well, we could see that. Let's just position it and dot outline. Oh, but this is the one that we end up removing. We made that and then we really didn't need it. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's zero, zero inside the person and that is the right spot that if we just locate on the board, 
at a certain, you know, each tile on the board has its registration point in the middle. So if you just look at the tile, this person would go in the right place for a diamond right here. So that's it right there. That's why 10 is only 10 down. Ah, that makes sense. Because I was wondering what was going on there. Why is this number doing that? But now we're going to wiggle. It's going to end up wiggling about that as it comes in. Do you want to see it wiggle? Yeah, nice, huh? Wiggle. So it's wiggling about this point as it walks. And now we better... Uh, by the way, that... Well, whatever. I'm going to remove that one. We'll get to that later. And what else do we need to change? To get rid of the outline. New outline. New outline. Okay, here's the Zim logo. This, how this originally started is this, this message that popped up here, this one, drag or scroll sideways. How it originally started is this was on the top here. And there was this empty space here until we actually pressed one of these things. We had a little Zim logo down at the bottom right because that's usually where they go. It was a touch tricky because by the time we get a person in here and the person's name, which might be a long name, if the logo were here, it was almost bumping right into that person. So we had to move the logo down, which was a different place than this. So it didn't line up on the bottom and it's kind of like, uh. So in the end, we, how it, how it looked in the, at the beginning, <laughs> beginning and whatever. So how it looked at the beginning is the, what the person was saying initially wasn't in a dialog box and we thought oh we should put it in a dialog box since we have dialog boxes we made it in a dialog box we pointed it straight down at the person at manthan here we pointed it straight down and then realized well you know what we would like to greet them i mean it's nice that they're greeting us but it's actually not really the person who's we're showing that's actually saying these it's us saying you know how's it going to them so we thought, well, we're Zim. By default, the dialog box here points to the left and it grows bigger to the right. So the dialog points this way and we thought, well, okay, it's not really the box that's saying it. So we move this up, the, the, the Zim thing up and say, hey, it's Zim that's doing the greeting. <laughs> Yay. And then it all kind of worked, you know, it's like, okay, good. Now we don't have this big empty space to start because when it starts, it's Zim saying, hey, what to do? Do that. And when you do that, Bardia, when you do that, it's now Zim saying hiya. Okay? So all that kind of worked out well. Yay. So that uh, made width, width is what we're looking at there. This is the made width. And that made width is slightly adjusted in that it's got a clear box. And what is faint? Mm, oh, sorry, that's clear text. So you can't see the text and faint is the color of the box. It's faint so that when you roll over it, it, it can activate. So if I click that, it'll go to Zim. Okay. If it were clear, that wouldn't activate. Or it might not. I can't remember. It depends on whether we put an expand on it. And we're scaling that a little bit bigger. We're locating it at the right place. And note, this is how we located it. We use in place. So usually when I use place, I'll leave it in there, comment it out to show you guys that that's how I did it. So say we wanted it right, right like that so that the tip is on the tip of the, the Z. What we do is we look at the console right here and we would use 912 by 404. That's the last place I moved it we would locate at 912 by 404, like that. And when I refresh again, refresh, there it is located, That that's place. So at that point you should turn place off so that, and we turn place off by commenting it out like so, or, or deleting it. Anyway, we don't wanna do that, but that's how those numbers uh, were come by. And we're animating that in from an alpha of zero and we're waiting a certain amount of time. So the weights got all mixed up because initially we animated this in after the message, but in the end, watch how they animate. This comes first, this comes next, the Zim, then this. So when it was all mixed up, we did this first and then the Zim down here afterwards at the very last thing often, we make the last thing that we animate in the Zim icon at the bottom right. So we animate the whole thing, made with Zim sort of thing. Um, but anyway, it was mixed up because we would see this first and then, then who was saying it came in. So we had to animate this in slightly first and that one they probably could have an animated in the same time. But we animated this one in, 
and then we animate that one in. Watch it one more time. In comes this, in comes this, in comes the Zim, and in comes that. All right, uh, that's a lot of animation stuff. If you used from on all of that animation, then it's animating from um, whatever you add to the animation, but it's animating to these positions. You got that? So from sort of flips it. Uh, and if that's the case, then you can say animate equals false. None of those will animate, but they'll all start in the right spot. So you could start your app just like this and never have to wait. You see how we have to wait for the animations to come in? That can be annoying if I'm then trying to test something later. But if you animate from, you can just say right up top here. I think some of these are animate from, but not all of them. Didn't really think it, but then right up here, oops, you can say animate animate uh, equals false. So that says don't animate anything. And are you ready? Here's what it looks like. So this stuff is in the right place because these ones we're all using from. This one animated an alpha from, from over here, but we didn't say from. I'll show you. So which one was that? That was the panel here. So the panel, we're animating the alpha. We've set it to zero. So if we turn off animations, it's going to be zero. It's going to be wrong, and it's going to be in this location. But if, in, if we reversed it and animated this stuff from, then uh, we would see it and animate this stuff from, et cetera. So uh, just some thoughts on the explore. But right now, we don't really care. Just letting it know that stuff. So we're getting rid of all that, saving it up. And hopefully it'll all work again. It comes in, comes in, right. Okay, good. So what's next? Mm, hope you guys are doing all right on this Zim Explorer, yeah? Are you? Ooh, Zim Explorer. If you ever hear that, you're welcome to put it on pause and go get a cookie. You know, if this is lasting too long for you, you don't want to put you to sleep or anything like that, you can go get some fresh air. Come on back, watch a little bit uh, later. But these explorers are always filled with little tips of how things are actually built and why. And why we've been doing this for a long time, so we uh, certainly enjoy exploring with you. <laughs> Yay! But we're sitting at half an hour, so you know, go get a break if you want. Come on back. All right. So that's the frame made width we talked about. Here's the dialog box. So we had mentioned that the dialog box usually looks the other way. So slants are in the tail. Okay. So let's do the default dialog box. Then we'll take out that stuff and we get not that. Let's get this refresh. So the dialog box usually looks this way. If that's what you want to call it. And then um, slants out that way. But we didn't want to put the Z over here, so we need to, to swap it. We don't want to flip it. If, if we just flip the scale, can you imagine what would happen? I mean, it's close. We could say, all right, dot ska for scale, minus one, comma, one. And we refresh this here. Okay, it's pointing that way, but unfortunately the text is that it possibly we go in and scale the text the opposite way again or something like that. It might, might actually work, but uh, there's another way to do it. You can say which way this should point. Should it point down to the left? Should it be off here? Should it be in the center there? So basically you can go center on all sides and pointing left or right, up or down on all sides as well. Cool, huh? You can also shift this. We know that, that that's not going to hit. So even if we even if we put the tail the right way, so I'm going to go this way. I won't do the shift. I'll say put the tail on the right. We did all the slants the right way. It was easy to make the slants go the right way. Uh, by default, this one's negative 10. That one's plus 10, negative 10, plus 10. So we just re sort of reverse the negatives on that, multiply them by negative 1 one or whatever. <laughs> and so it just took a second to put those in. We're now saying put the tail on the right. And so if we look at it, it's not flipped anymore. It's not scaled anymore. Oh. Uh, now it's not scaled anymore. <laughs> oh boy. 
So there we go. But you see how that's point is too far over. I can't I can't deal with that. So we know that's going to happen. We know this might be too long or too high. So we've got a shift vertical. We've got a shift horizontal. Sorry, tail tail shift vertical and a tail shift horizontal. We're doing the tail shift horizontal to bring this to the left 50 pixels. And then we get this. This moved over to the left 50 pixels and it points at that. Okay. Okay, so dialog is set up to, you know, handle that. We are centering that or centering the reg, locating at the person. We're moving it up. We're caching it a fair bit. As this, as this animates in, we're animating in the alpha. Watch what happens if we don't cache it and animate the alpha. Can you imagine? I saw the tail as this big triangle and, and the rest of this rectangle. I'll do it again. See that? Because when you anim when you change the alpha of a container, everything inside it gets an, it gets the alpha. So the box gets the alpha and the tail gets the alpha. But unfortunately, where those two things overlap, the alpha becomes more uh, opaque. So that means if you want to animate the alpha of a container of stuff, you probably have to cache it. Then it treats it all as an image and will all the animate the alpha will animate all together. So we're caching it. Unfortunately the tail of the um, of the what's that called? The of the dialogue is not part of the bounds. Therefore we had to increase the margin on that cache. I think there was something we did that too before here when we cached our very when we cached the pane or no what is this panel? the borders of anything go half outside the cache region, half inside. I thought we adjusted that. We probably adjusted that maybe on rectangles, but perhaps the panel itself uh, was you know, too many parts or something like that for it to pick that up. I can't remember. Anyway, the answer is if your cache cuts off a little bit of the edge, we uh, made it easy to increase the margin on that cache so it makes it a little bit bigger. You could probably go ahead and just cache the size of the stage on everything anytime you want. Nobody would ever notice. But um, for efficiency, it's probably best to try and crop that cache close enough. But okay, whatever. So we cache it when we animate it. And then when we're done animating here, when we call, we uncache it. So that dialog is not cached. So again, cache during animation uncache when done. We're also applying the weight and using a from on that, as we mentioned. So there's the from on the animate. Um, and we're animating from an alpha of zero going to just an alpha of one, which is the default. That's why if we don't animate, it would be sitting at the default alpha one. Unit time. Okay, I think we're good. Let's go to the next thing, which is the label underneath. So this is uh, well, I don't know if we need to style it anymore like that. Probably not. We used to have a few more things in there, so let's just go uh, font. Um, before we added the dialogue, we had the text was up above in another thing, and we had the, the a message. But as soon as we added the message and the text, uh, uh, the, sorry, the opening instructions, so as soon as we added the instructions and whatever greeting was going to, we added those to the dialogue. Uh, we no longer need to style. So we had a bunch of labels here. Don't need to style anymore. So font Amboy. Boop. There we go. So we need that. Okay. By the way, that font, just to refresh you on the fonts, was brought in up here. We use a font object where we say what the font is going to be called down below, and we put the source of it. That is kind of, we can do that with this sort of stuff as well. You can say source. Uh, I can't remember how this one works. Um, yeah, that would be source. I think SRC or file, it's SRC. And then you could give it, a, I think it's a label or a name, label maybe. I can't remember what it is. Uh, how about test or something like that? Okay, so you can make every uh, asset that you bring in something like that. I'm not sure if those two things are right. 
something like that. And then down below, if you were going to use that asset, this was names, you wouldn't then have to say names.txt, you would say test. Okay, so whatever, oh, ID, ID, I think, whatever that ID is, you can then use it. But we found that that was just like a fair, it's just a little bit extra every time to do that. And so we didn't think people would mind so much uh, bringing in name.txt and then just using the full uh, file name right there. Oops, almost right there, right there. But with font, we haven't done that yet. So font needs both sides of these, or if it's a Google font, you just use the source because it's got the name of it in the source there. But we'll, we'll take another look at that because it would be possible. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just do that? And then down below, just put that in there in for the font. So that makes it easier. You don't have to do that font object. And down below, when you go to make a font, where do we make a font? Right there. We could put that. So, I mean, that would be more consistent with how we did images and sound. So both pictures and sound can, can do it this way. Why not font? So we'll have a look at that in the next version of Zim. So I mean, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure we looked at it before and decided that that wasn't either wasn't possible or we didn't want to do it because <laughs> we've known that about that being sort of inconsistent for quite some time. It's just we haven't made it consistent yet. I can't remember why not. All right. Did we change everything back? I think we did. Good. So the label is again center regged and located at the person and moved down. We then remove the person, which is touch touch awkward, uh, kind of left over from not knowing what we were about to do and the fact that we had just built everything else based on where the person was, but yet we don't actually need the person at the beginning. One of those moves. <laughs> we, if we don't need the person at the beginning, but we need this to be centered on the person in the future, possibly we could have made this to start and centered everything else based on the message. You know, that, that would have worked. Or like I said before, we could have tiled it all, removed it from the tile, but then we'd have to add it back to the tile anyway. So it, it's hard to say. It's, it's no more than just one line difference. So I, I think we're okay. Anyway, we removed the person. In the end, we're remaking that person. That's another thing. If that was a permanent person, well, then it wouldn't be an issue. But the issue was, it's not a permanent person. And one of the very first things we do when we show a person is get rid of the old person. Because <laughs> every time we show a person, we have to make a new one. Uh, well, anyway, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. <laughs> uh, let's go to the emitter now. And the emitter, we're emitting one of those icons. Here's, uh, well, this is the frame.make icon, which is a little bit different than the frame dot made with. So frame.made with adds the words made with zoom. <laughs> we just took away the zoom. You know, to tell you the truth, it probably would have been better to, instead of setting that to clear, not even bother doing the text. Ah, I know another difference. Another difference is one just makes the Zim logo. The made with adds a link. So when I click that, it opens up Zim and I, I want that link to be there. So that's why I use the made with with this one where that link is. But when we're emitting in the particle emitter, we're emitting the icon. So just to refresh your memory, when I click on something, Aaron, see those Zs? Those are the Zim icons. And we're setting the top and bottom to light. We're getting rid of the box color. And then each slat gets a color in an array. There's no short form for that. It's not worth it. Not, not many people use it. There we go. So we're setting the red that in the center, I think that's automatically done by the particle emitter. Let's have a look here. Uh, oops. Um, okay, save that. Maybe it was something else. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. What's that doing? Desktop reveal! Um, let me click open in browser. Yeah, okay, so there's some error of something that we did before. F12, failed to load resource. Oh, we were goofing around with some stuff up here, weren't we? Uh, 
I don't know. Let's undo. Oh, asset test. Okay, I must have left that. Oh, I, do I have the ID? Well, okay. Undo, 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 undo. Names.txt. We'll be right back. Style font and boy, we took that away and put the font inside there. Oh, with a comma, I bet you that's it right there. Oh, I could be wrong. Should have said something to do with a comma. Looks like we're back in order. Uh, what were we wanting to check on? There's the Z's. That's what we were working on, but I don't remember where we were exactly. Tile. That's the end of it all. We're getting there. We're almost there. There's the emitter. We emitted that. Oh, uh, the center edge. Do we need the center edge? That's right. so we take that out. I think tiles by default will center edge. Or not tiles. Emitters will center edge. And we check one. That well, looks fine. Yeah, I think so. If we were spinning it, we could tell better. Um, but I, I think that's fine, yeah. I'm pretty sure that the emitter automatically center edges what you pass into it. So that will be handled. We start pause true. So we don't want to emit all the time. And then we're going to locate that at the person, move it up. And eventually, down below here, when we go to show the person, we'll spurt the emitter right there. When we show the person, we spurt 30 of them. We also are wanting to do something like when it's done emitting, that's when we show the rest of this. So watch, uh, David, he's emitting. Once it's spurt, once it finished, it uh, shows all this. But be careful because there it's finished, but this, so it finishes emitting. So that's called spurted. So on spurted means it's not emitting anymore, but it might still be decaying. So as in it's fading away and getting smaller. Um, so this is spurt decayed. That's when it's all done getting smaller. At that point, we show the message. All right. So we show the person when we press on here on their tap. There it is. So we show person when we tap and when the that'll that'll actually make the emitter go and when the emitter is spurted then we call message. So here's show person now. Ah, deep breath. Boom 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 boom. How are you guys doing out there? Hopefully uh, you're enjoying watching how we code with Zim and can't wait to start coding yourself. And you're always welcome to ask some questions on Slack. That's what it's there for. That's why there were 600 of you there is uh, you've been asking questions. So that's great. You're also welcome to show us works and just chat and all that kind of stuff. We'd love that. And we've had people on there for oh six or seven years, something like that. Maybe five, I don't know. I can't remember when we started Slack. We started Zim about eight years ago, probably started Slack around, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago. So dialogue, what are we doing here? We have a series. So this is the colors of the dialogue box. Have a look at what we do. There it is, green and purple. I pick another one. Hello, man, then. Now it's, uh, did I say pink and purple last time? <laughs> Okay, why? I think it was green. It was green and purple. I don't know. My memory is sort of saying, I thought I just said pink and purple. So there it is. Um, gray and gray. Aaron, what have we got for you? Yellow and blue. Uh, who else have we got? Ad mini. Who have we got there? Um, orange. and So it keeps on picking two different colors. The lighter of the colors goes down here. Mm, who have we got? Margaret. Margaret. Ready? The green is the lighter and it goes there. The lighter isn't necessarily the background though. We want it to the next time it comes around to this. Maybe it'll be purple. Maybe it'll be purple as the background. Okay, so th there's the crux. We just have two colors that can be seen on top of one another no matter which way we put it. However, down here we want the light one, not the dark one, because we're sitting on black. Purple on black doesn't look very good. That's pink on black. Uh, purple and black is almost acceptable, but not really. It sort of darkens that out. Okay, got it. So here's our sets of colors that we want. And it could be that this is the front of the, of the um, dialogue and this is the 
sorry, the front, this is the text of the dialogue, this is the background, or it could be this is the background, and that's the text, okay, got it? However, these first ones right here are what we want to show in the name underneath. So that creates quite an interesting puzzle. So first of all, we're going to add them to a series, which means as we, as we pick them, it's always going to pick that, then it's going to pick that, then it's going to pick that, that, and that, um, and just loop through it again. Okay. The problem is if we just put in the arrays like this, shrimp, 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 et cetera, comma, etc. Then what would happen as Zim picks, it goes to pick this. Well, it sees yet another possibility to pick and it picks one of these things. So in other words, if you Zim pick this with, with the arrays there, the first time it would give you either this or that. The second time it would give you either this or that. Third time it would give you either this or that, etc. And then it would loop around again. We don't want just one of these. So picks, in other words, picks, are recursive. They go inside one another. You can put as many picks as you want in and it'll just keep on going as long as it can pick. As soon as it can't pick, it'll return a value. Pretty amazing. Right? Does that does that sound cool? It, it, I mean, it sounds cool to me. The first time it's going to get either one of these two. Next time it's going to get either one of these two. That, that could be handy. But that's not what we want in this case. What we want in this case is the first time we want this array. Second time we want that array. And so we wrap it in a no pick object. And what that basically is saying is first time it gets this and it says, oh, no, wait a minute, I'm not going to pick this. I'm going to return that. So that gets returned. Okay, so every time we call dialog colors, it's going to get this array, then this array, then this array, and we'll deal with that later. So that's us setting up the, um, the colors. And we have also set some variables up here called colors and colors light because between show person, we're going to be setting these, but we need to use them down in the message right here. Uh, border color, 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 background colors. Okay, so the color and the border color are the same. There, that, and so that's using colors. I don't know actually if we need colors light down there, though, come to think of it. Do we? No. So why don't we switch that up and just put the colors light right in here, I hope. Const colors light and delete that. Okay. Let's have a look, see if that works, and then I'll be right back with you. Boop, 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 boop. Hopefully we won't get any errors. That's the gray. Is it always starting on the gray? It must be. So do you know what we should do? Like if I refresh this, that went from gray to blue. Here we go. Gray to blue. But watch closely. You see how the last one was blue? Now it's yellow. So that's showing that the random's working. Last time it was blue on the outside and yellow on the inside. I can't remember what the gray was each time. I think it was lighter gray on the outside. Burp. It was lighter gray on the outside and darker gray on the inside. That is as well, but it, it might have been switched. Uh, anyway, the solution to that is take this series and we can dot shuffle it. So, uh, no, that shuffles it each time. We don't want to do that. Um, dot random it. Okay. What random will do is it will randomize those colors and then it repeats it and randomize it again. But it's possible that the first and the last could be the same, so we probably would want mix again. Okay, now it won't always start with the gray. It better not start with the, the gray. If it does, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> okay. And as we cycle through, it would then randomize it again. I think that's probably the best. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. It is possible that we... Uh, no, you know what? Maybe we should just... Uh, not randomize it each time. So if we're going to not randomize it each time, which one do we want? Bum, bum, bum. Okay, whatever. Uh, that That's uh, good enough. We, we could just randomize this stuff in an array and pass it into the series, then it would do it randomly in that order. I think one of, one of our settings probably is... Wait, well, okay, let's look. Uh, docs. And we type in a series like this and get to see where all that happens. Uh, so 
let's see. All right, so if we scroll down here, are the methods. So, bo 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 random, Boolean default true. So if, well, anyway, random. Uh, randomizes the order of the series each time it finishes. Okay, mix. Uh, randomizes the order of the series each time it finishes, but avoids duplicating ends and shuffle. Shuffles order of series, but when it repeats, it does the same order. Ah, you know, that's probably what we want because because it's swapping the colors. I don't mind if it does those same colors in the same order. By the time it gets through those colors, you've probably forgotten. You know, by the time it gets through here, you can't remember the order of them anyway, I don't think. And we run the risk if we do the mix here. Basically, what that means is we might get one that is yellow and blue. Then we might get one that's green and orange. Then we might get one that's yellow and blue again. That is a possibility in the mix. Once once we finish this, it might go to close anyway. Where shuffle will keep them all as far away from each other. And yet these things are being swapped. So it seems like it is a mix. Okay, so I like shuffle. There we go. All right, let's move along though. We're in here in the show person and... Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Yes or no. Do you want to know what that is? I suppose we've seen what every other line is, so we may as well. Okay. For some reason, on this list, no other list that I could tell anyway, but it was either on this one or this one. I can't remember. When I pressed on the line right there, when I pressed on the line, it gave me a selection that that's called a tap. It's a t we're tapping on it. It re recorded a tap, but it gave me no index. I, I suspect that in here is a character that is awkward. And I don't know, it's causing like a little bit of extra space on there. It didn't do it on any other one. It was so, it's such a weird bug. Anyway, the solution to that bug is, I just said, if there's no selected index, then don't bother doing this stuff. Uh, so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yes, in the um, just to be open with you. <laughs> what is it called when you hide things behind closed doors? I can't remember what when government hides things. Transparency, that's it. <laughs> For transparency, that was a small glitch. Uh, I don't know what it was. Anyway, we're spurting the emitter when we show the person. We're disposing the last person, because remember this happens a number of times. We're setting the dialog and the label to visible false. So uh, each time we go and pick a person, like right now, how about you? Who could we pick? Let's let's scroll on through. We, uh, these guys haven't, poor Dale, poor Damonvere, Dana. Okay, so each time we do that, you see this stuff, we hide it, it's hidden. So the dialogue and that guy down there, hidden. Okay. Uh, and then we bring it back. When we show the message, we make them visible true again. We could have removed from and add to. That also works. Uh, we're taking the colors. So a little bit of a head shake here. I was hoping to keep this at about an hour. That's about now. We're nearly done. We just got some, some housekeeping. Just a little bit of housekeeping there. So let's uh, shake our arms, go get that cookie, whew, 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 and see what we're doing here. This was that little puzzle that we made ourselves where we wanted to show the light color down below, but after that, we wanna mix these things up. So what we do is we go and get our next thing in the series. So that's how you, you just run the series and that gets the next thing in it. But we made a copy of it and we stored that in colors. Then we used colors at zero as the first. Okay, so that, that, that or sorry, as colors at zero is, is going to be this, 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 or this. And that's what we're going to put uh, where? There. That's, no, that's the dialogue's background color. That's, no, that's actually the wrong one. What was it? We want colors, oh yeah, colors light. So colors light is what we're looking for right here. 
color light. That's why we can make it a constant. It's only in this one. So color light will go on the label down below. And we'll see how that happens. Color light goes on the label. Um, let me see. So then we shuffle colors. So that's the, the, the crux there. Color light, we store that before we shuffle. Then we shuffle colors. Why did we copy that? Well, we copied that because if we shuffle colors, it's actually shuffling this or this. Because this thing right here, prop, is a reference to the results. Because that's an array, we're saying, hey, that's the array. So if we later shuffle it, the next time we come through, this is shuffled and it's no longer potentially, it could be the wrong one being the first thing, and this would be wrong. We found that out, not because we thought of it, but because we noticed it as a bug. We were like, why, why is it using the dark deck? And we had to like dig through that, and that's a pretty tricky one. It's often a tricky uh, bug when you're referencing an array and make, doing something to it. And later, you think you've got the original, but you don't. You've got the, the changed one. All right, so that was how we solved that. A little bit tricky, huh? We're making a new person. We're locating it. Oh, we disposed the old person, remember? right there we got rid of the old person we're making a new person we're locating it at that start thing that's the x and y that we showed you already we are wiggling it it's rotation in uh, one second and we're animating it to a scale of three from are we doing it from no we're not so we wait a sec we got a scale of three in both cases okay that must have been left over from something before we're animating it from a scale of one this whole time has the person been growing bigger <laughs> the person's just been sitting there don't tell me it's i've left that in there john christie there it is getting bigger i think that that was been missing the whole time hey person getting bigger rah, rah, rah. rob fitzgerald getting bigger okay hey better cool doesn't look nice Okay, so he's going from a scale of zero or she to or they to a scale of three in one second. And then our callback is saying animate the rotation back to zero. Ah, right. So when we wiggle, if we didn't do this thing right here, animate it back to zero. Oops, sorry about that. Save. Here's what we would get. Hmm. Hello, David. In comes David not at zero it's not that bad definitely not at zero a little bit drunk <laughs> okay a lot drunk actually it looks kind of dynamic doesn't it but uh wiggle if we wiggle and stop it after a certain amount of time it doesn't um do anything so we put in the requests in the zim forum to possibly say that if you have limited the time maybe automatically set the property back to, I don't know if we can do that though because if it's say you're rotating something and it's rotating a lot well we are rotating something a lot you if we just set it back to zero for instance it might look like a jump you may want to animate that back in a certain amount of time and who knows how long that will be so anyway there we go we've um, animated back to the zero position once once all that's done However, we could put a call. What we don't have in Wiggle is a call. So luckily we had an animate tagging along here at the same time. So we put the call in the animate. The label's text becomes the e.target.text because what's calling this in the first place is this guy up here, the tap. We call show person from the tap. So e.target is whichever list. This is a bunch of lists here, nine lists going in, but on each list is this tap. So whichever list tapped, that's e.target, and we're asking for its text. e.target.text. We're changing the color to the, the light color. We're darkening it a little bit, but uh, that's okay. We're setting no mouse on the panel, and what that means is as soon as we show a person and we're emitting here, as we're emitting, we don't want you using the panel and we're going to animate its alpha down as well, quite quickly, but we animate the alpha down, watch. Okay, and when we bring it back, we bring it back all together, but we animate it down. I don't know if you can tell, it's a 0.1 second animation, but you would have been able to tell the difference if, if I took that off. Okay, dot alp, although I'm sure you're ready to get to the end of this, aren't you? I am. <laughs> All right, we refresh here. And when I tap, <laughs> all right, there it is going to zero, obviously. Uh, that's not what I meant. Uh, what do we have, 0.15, if we want it to be exact. 
Ooh, what a designer I am. Ready? Okay, there it is going immediately there. Can you tell the difference? That's immediately off versus the animate off. I don't know. It's a little bit tricky to tell, but I think I can tell. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I could definitely tell if we're... That was in 0.1 seconds. If we did 0.5 seconds, you know, ready? Here we go, 0.5 seconds. I can definitely tell when it goes 0.5 seconds. Okay, but then I'm watching the animation rather than this stuff. So we just want to make it not quite as, um, it's almost subliminal. Subliminal UX. Sub UX. Sub experience. 0.1. There we go. Now on to the message. So here's where we show the dialogue and the, the name below now. We bring back the mouse for the panel. So we turned off the mouse so that you couldn't interact with it as it's animating. By the way, if you could interact with it by it's animating, that's bad news, ready? Watch this. Deep. Deep, 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 deep. I'm kind of going forever, and it's 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 making all these people kind of come in, and you know, eh, still works, but you you don't want that happening. So that's that's a beginner bug. So we don't let them use the panel as we're animating that stuff on the right, which means we bring it back. We've handled that like that. We set the the words of the dialogue box to our greets so our greets well i remember that i remember that an hour and a half ago our greets way up at the top here was a series of phrases all mixed up okay great so that's greets which means when we want to show what the greet is right here we call that series and set the words of the dialogue box to that <clears throat> We then change the background color and the border color and the color. So this is the font color, the border color, and the font color are the same from colors. The shuffled. Colors is shuffled. Colors was the copy, then we shuffled it. And then the, what's next? The background color is that. Okay. We set the visibles of those to true so we can see them and we update the stage. Yay. So that's the message. Now, like I said, this, this part's quite easy. These are these are just two buttons, normal Zim stuff. Go to Slack, see video. So button, we're setting the, the width to auto. That means it'll grow to the size of the font. We are setting the background color to faint. I like that effect. If this weren't, if it were that color, we would see these buttons too much, but this is more subtle with the border, border button and then on the rollover, I like that effect. Okay, so that's how that's done. And then we have our labels. When we tap on them, we go to Slack. This one will go to this video. Yay, this video. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, and then we're turning off the style just in case that would affect something else later. And here we have the, we're tiling those two things. So this is an example of tiling some, some stuff. We could have maybe tiled this whole right-hand side including this tile, so put this tile in the other tile. Um, and here's here's the example. Tile this array. There's two columns, one row, that spacing. I don't care about the vertical spacing. True means treat these as unique because they've got taps on them and we don't want to randomly pick from them. We want that one and that one. Uh, we're locating them and moving them up. We're animating them in at the right time. With a bounce out. We animate them from an X of a relative 400. So this just means from where it is right here, but go relative 400. So over here somewhere. Or we could have said uh, the, the width of the stage, which is capital W plus 200 or 400 or something like that or whatever. And gone over there. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And this, by the way, is why we were getting that little warning in there, or, or this thing, F12. So no need to worry about that. That's the, the traffic counter trying to operate a local script. So uh, sorry about that. If you happen to notice that, that's this. Saying, hey, we're part of ZimZim. Zim. Thank you. Woohoo! 
That's what this is. And we can look at our stats. Wow. Thank you, Zimsters. One last thing before we call it a day is I would like to tell you that this is our Zim Slack right here. Do you remember this? And if we take a look up here, we're on a pro trial. They just gave us a pro trial that ends in about, well, it ends at the end of the week. Today is Monday and ends on Saturday. So if you happen to see this video and are watching right at this very moment, you can pop on into the Zim Slack and look back through, maybe maybe you were here a couple of years back, you know, you can find your message. Otherwise, unfortunately, Slack has just uh, changed. They used to show 10,000 messages and then anything beyond that, you'd have to pay the upgrade. The upgrade, by the way, is ridiculous. I can't remember, it's $6 a person a month. I think that's what it is. We've got 600 people. I can't believe that they would really charge us, what is that, $3,600 a month? You know, like, we're close to what I would want to pay for that. Even if it's a year, I wouldn't pay for that. Um, anyway, so maybe it's active members that month or something like that. I don't know. I, that might that might be possible, but still not very pleasant. So anyway, they uh, they changed from ten thousand, which they would show you, and unfortunately, we were we're at we're at forty thousand messages or something like that. We were at thirty when they changed. They changed from that sort of number limit to a monthly a uh, uh, three month limit. So now it won't show any messages before three months ago, and that's okay. That means we don't care about how many messages we're making. But it's sort of a drag because we can't look back through historically to find out, you know, solutions. So that's a bit of a pain. However, you're welcome to come in now and you can look back. So I had some fun looking back at, uh, let's see, what was it? This missions thing. I had totally forgotten about missions. And aren't they beautiful? Look at all those missions. So we had, we did a contest and we, you won't be able to see this, but you can see it now if you want. So for the next six days, you can come in and see any, do a search up here, find, find yourself, find any old messages you left. You might be interested in doing that. Okay, so welcome to Slack, our 610 people. Um, hope, hopefully you're, you're all doing well. I would love it if you come back in and keep on coding with Zim. If, if this is you know your first time watching some Zim stuff, and you haven't even joined Slack, you're welcome to join Slack, zimjs.com slash Slack, or zimjs.com slash Discord, and join us on Discord too. A few hundred people over there, we roughly post announcements kind of in the same way, and any updates, and any videos, and any examples, we post on both of them. But uh, Slack has always been our more official uh, support uh, place. So come on in. This has been a Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and we would love to see you. Um, that's me there, with a little VR headset on. We would love to see you, and have a great day or night. Hope you enjoyed the video. You're welcome to give it a little thumbs up on YouTube, and we'll talk to you later. Ciao.